What's up guys and welcome back for another solo mining episode and we are going to be talking a lot about admin kind of admin stuff today I want to talk about character audits I want to talk about training queue optimization and finally the more meteor kind of topic is a complete overview a complete skill overview um, for basically through the lens of an industrialist I want to go through every every single skill and talk about what's important and why and um, this might you know span past mining a little bit um, I'll try to give my general thoughts on a lot of skills and like their importance and things like that so what we're looking at right now is this is a character this is probably the next character that is going to be transitioning to being one of the miners for this series so I'm gonna give you kind of a general idea how I manage multiple alts um, over the course of long periods of time and how I kind of just make sense of everything because the more alts you add to your operation it can get kind of um, it can kind of get complex to manage all of them in terms of like keeping everybody kind of moving along the uh, the uh, progression path for whatever you uh, whatever your goals might be so generally I think we're going to start off by talking about just skill queue optimization it's not that big of a topic um, a lot of uh, and it's also probably very um, situational a lot of people probably you know handle this a little bit different but uh, as you can tell this character has like 149 uh, skills queued up and I'll talk about you know the different um, stages or the different um, uh, I guess the different modes that I put my alts in at certain times but in terms of like the training queue itself I generally try to organize it from um, least time to greatest time obviously if you have prerequisites that have to be accomplished or trained before subsequent skills you know you might see a situation where you have to queue like a an eight day before you can queue the, the next skill for like you know 30 minutes or an hour or whatever so um, but the bigger picture is I try to make sure that this is um, sorted as much as possible but right now this uh, skill queue is not sorted at all so we're gonna audit this character we're gonna try to um, get it uh, tr uh, training queue optimized and then lastly we'll talk about we'll just go through every skill go through every skill category might be a little bit of a lengthy episode but I want to try to give as as a compl uh, as much of a complete picture of skills and everything um, that I can. A lot of my scaling is going to be based on how uh, on how fast I can get kind of like my system kind of updated. So um, I'm going to be doing uh, off camera today. I'm going to be doing a lot of testing with three characters. I'm bringing this character out to location actually right now so that we can I can do some like testing. I can see if I can. Um, you know sustain 4k um, high quality with three accounts running I know we can do two yesterday's episode we were able to do uh, two and it looked great um, I'm glad you guys enjoyed that so right now we're gonna be looking at if we can actually sustain that with three characters if not then we'll, we'll make sure that this character is training what it needs to train um, and so when we actually are able when we actually have that overhead and we're able to get this character kind of out there with the other two we're good to go so we're gonna get this character docked up and then we're gonna go ahead and get started but generally speaking uh, train queue optimization um, I usually just try to like sort it from least time to greatest time um, unless they're um, long-term uh, generalized training but I'll talk more about those different statuses once we kind of get um, docked up here so I still use the old launcher. I know CCP, I asked them directly actually when their new launcher came out if they were going to actually get rid of the old launcher, sunset it, and they said yes, but I just never uninstalled it. And I continue to use it because I like the account labels. I use those to kind of identify or put into a status my alts and that goes into kind of the character audit thing we're going to be talking about today, changing alt status and what that really means but I'm not sure if you're even able to still download the old launcher I think if you had it already and you didn't uninstall it it still works fine let me know in the comments if you guys um, are still able to actually download it from their site the new launcher I just don't like it it's, it's too clunky it, it's way too uh, I just don't I don't like it at all I have it installed but 
um, I don't use it typically but um, so let's go and talk about status um, any of my alts at any one time are either in one of two states either generalized training and I label those as GT or specialized training so I label those as ST what that really means is if I go on a hiatus if I'm not going to be playing E for a bit then I'll usually put all of my alts into uh, GT generalized training and what I normally do is I just queue up everything I don't really worry too much about um, queue optimization I pretty much just try to like queue absolutely everything that they have available to them um, and I try to queue up all the way up to like 150 uh, max out the skill queue that way I know that while I'm away or while I'm not directly affecting or looking at those characters or using them then their skill points are still going up right now you can use a little bit of um, intuition here like if you know that if you're gonna be like not looking at that tune for a while and you know that tune is gonna be slated for a minor or maybe it's gonna be slated for a research um, alt for BPOs then you can lean heavier on those type of skills and just queue them up um, in any order you want that way you know it doesn't matter they're going to be getting that stuff trained regardless now when i get in closer to the point where i'm going to bring an alt into the daily kind of operations then i move them into what i like to call specialized training or st and that is very much um micromanaged that is when things like the skill queue get um, optimized and then before I really do that when I go to move them into like specialized training I do an audit and usually the audit happens before I start messing with any skill cues because one I had looked through all my alts I figure out which one is closer in skills to the purpose or the activity that I'm trying to accomplish with an additional tune so whatever one kind of um, is closer to where I need it to be is the one that gets um, changed over to specialized training and then we kind of just rework their entire um, skill queue um, and everything like that so that leads me into like the character audit so we're gonna go and look at this um, this really only is effective if you're running multiple alts I run I have like 30 alts right most of them are alpha most of them were made to like you know sit as alpha for like six months and just train up um, passively but actively speaking I usually only log in like seven or eight characters for daily logins um, in most days I don't log them all in for daily logins it just really kind of depends on if there's like a, an event going on but and that's kind of why I have to do like a character audit um, every now and then to kind of see where people are at now well, the biggest thing that I can tell you is if you want to track um, progress then I use um, ship fittings ship fittings are the fastest way to kind of you know standardize all of your tear characters especially in terms of mining um, that's why I run a corporation I can just save all of my fittings to the corporation and then when I bring a new alt on board or if I make a new alt bring them into the corporation I can then use those court fittings as um, a gauge on where they are at and it also allows me to add skills to their queue that I know that they're going to need if they're going to meet um, my personal SOP so to speak so I'm going to go through kind of a few of these we're going to audit this character um, some other things I'll do when I'm auditing characters is I will look at I like I like taking all my I like Blood Raider uh, libraries um, I usually cannot stand taking a, any ship out that doesn't have a, um, a skin on it. I just don't like the default skin. So this character has the Hulk um, Blood Raider uh, library on it. So I know that it's dec it can go out in a Hulk. But if I want to take it out in a Mackinac, I'm probably going to need to get the skin for it. So I, that is a consideration for me. But that's a little, um, that's kind of like more of my thing than, you know, general usage. But, um. I usually look at personalization. I'll look at um, pilot services. I'll look at wh when does their Omega expire? Like how off, how far out are they? This one's out to like March first of 2026. So I got two years ish on this um, character. And then I'll look at character uh, augmentations. So this one has training uh, um, implants on it. It so this is going to be a minor, which is what we're auditing it for. It doesn't have. The MX1005, like the other alt does, so if I want it to match it with the other alt, 
we already know we're going to need an implant here. So I usually make a note in like a spreadsheet, um, any results or anything that needs to be done on a character that is already passed, er, that I already know is coming off of uh, generalized training and is going to move into specialized training and they're going through an audit, I'll make a list of everything that needs to be accomplished. So the next time we go to Jita, I'll probably pick up a one MX1005 and for, so this tune has that box uh, checked. Um, and that's really kind of all I look at on the uh, the character side of things. Um, if you're doing like mission, if you're doing this like character audits for like mission runners or something like that, you might have to look at reputation, interactions, um, things like that, what they're able to actually do. So the actual character screen is good. Um, the next thing I'll do is, you know, you can jump straight into their skill queue and start looking at what skills they have and what they're able to fly um, based on the skills that they have trained. That's one way I do it, but I use the fit window, the corp fittings, to paint me a better picture, a more readable picture, because usually I'm doing these audits like on multiple tunes at a time, so it's like I'm trying not to spend a whole lot of time on every single tune, right? So, just based on how I like to train my alts and like my SOP, um, generally speaking, um, blockade runner, crane, like I want every alt to be able to fly this fitting. So I can very quickly see that this character, yeah, it can fly the crane. So in a pinch, it can, if it can't be a perfect miner right now, in a pinch, it can use the uh, corp um, crane asset to move stuff back and forth. It would, this also means it can also technically go to Jita and take care of its own implants and, and things like that, which we'll probably have another alt that's more designated as a runner to do this, one that doesn't have training clones on it. I try to minimize the amount of movement between star systems for anything that has improved clones. And, and I put these on every character that is, any character that gets logged in at least once a week, um, I consider active. And um, so they usually have these improved on them. And these are pretty cheap. I mean, you're looking at like maybe 300 or ish mil for the full set, I think was what I spent when I kind of blanketed, um, you know, put them on everybody. But um, this is what my character is usually running. I don't really run harvest. You don't really need the mining implant harvest set for high seg mining. Um, this is a little bit more better bang for your buck because when you think about things in terms of like SP uh, versus like ES cost, that's why I try to stay away from using large skill injectors because. <clears throat> they end up being very very expensive because like you basically take like the uh, the total amount the total cost of like the large skill injector and then you look at how many skill points you get out of it you do the do the math to figure out what every sp of that is worth in isk it's always going to be cheaper to passive train your characters with just regular omega time so you would take like the entire value of um what the omega costs for 30 days and then you would uh look at how many uh, skill points they're getting you know per minute and then you know you calculate all that out and it all it's always going to be cheaper the cheapest way to get skill points is just letting them passive train i'll talk a little bit more about um sp per minute whenever we start getting into like the skill stuff um but i usually try to put these on here because these wouldn't sit on here for years and years and years and there's going to be crazy value in terms of just getting everybody's sp really really high um very quickly so so the, the all that this stuff is good like we got the crane as far as SOP goes it can fly this so then we go it, since it's gonna be a miner we want to be able to look at different mining ships and kind of we're I'm not gonna uh, audit this for a Oracle because it's just it's not gonna be using it as a Oracle but see we can go ahead and like look at Exumer we can look at this okay so we can do the Hulk fit it can't do the Mackinac fit so we're gonna have to look into that and see what's going on there you can do the skill uh, skiff fit it can't do endurance or prospect so um, we'll look into that and then industrial it's not going to be a command alt so we know that this isn't going to be a big issue it has no skills it has not done any work towards being a command alt so that's not its purpose so it's fine another thing we do too is we can go to the ship tree um, here and get a quick idea because we know we haven't done any expeditionary frigates here so or any command alts so we know we're just basically auditing this to be able to run the Mac all and the Hulk fit to add into our operation so let's go ahead and go up here and we're gonna look at the Hulk fit right now so the Hulk fits good um, this is the one we actually uh, bought the other day so we know it can run that and then we also gonna look at the Mac and all fit I have a feeling I know what this is it's gonna be mining drones so yeah mining drone op and mining drone specialization which is fine we're not really planning on running 
mining drones on these Mackinaws right now. But uh, I do have those in the actual fit that we bought a few days ago. So we'll probably look at buying those skill books and putting those into the queue when we get to that point. And uh, we'll start looking at the skills and stuff. So we know this character is not that far away from running the Hulk fit or the Mackinac fit. So it's, it's pretty close to actually being able to go into full operations. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to basically look at the skill queue. And as you can tell, this character is very much in generalized training. So it has um, it had 150 skills queued up in just very random order because it was basically on the back burner. And the only goal was it for just to train a bunch of stuff um, while I didn't have time to look at it or anything. So <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and... I usually don't clear all this. I usually just add stuff to the top because it's kind of annoying to add everything in here. But we're going to go to, you know, can train now. And I'm just kind of looking down here, like Magic 14 stuff. You know, you can look at, like, mechanics. It's got that. But um, we really need to get mining drones. And this drone skills is very important. And we have a lot of shield stuff going on right now at the top. And then we go, like, immediately into drone stuff. So I do kind of like how this looks right now. But I think we're going to clear this for the sake of the video and I don't really want to buy the mining drone operation or specialization books when they still have a lot of mining or still have a lot of drone skills left like drone interfacing directly affects mining yield on that stuff so I really don't want to you know start training mining drone operation or specialization when we still don't have mining our drone interfacing five so drones are very very important for miners they are the first line of offense um, and I just try to make sure that they're maxed out as much as possible. So we're looking at this now. Uh, pretty much everything is three days. I usually don't go down to the hour or minute mark when I'm like sorting these into the queue. You can if you want to micromanage it that far, but we, I generally just try to use the days and like the importance. So we know we're pushing to mining drone operation and specialization. So we want to go three days on the interfacing, and then Caldari drone specialization is really important too. So we want to go three days on that. And then durability is good, and so is uh, sharpshooting. Sharpshooting will be done after three days with that skill. And then we're going to go ahead and do durability, and then avionics, and then navigation. Now that just kind of leaves us with a bunch of 19 dayers. So the higher priority there would be interfacing five at 19 days, and uh, Caldari drone spec five, and then durability. I'm going to go ahead and move to another category and back and make sure there's no prerequisites and nothing else got really unlocked there. So this would be a good a way to like optimize this. This is very important for a miner. Now we can actually, that's a baseline. Now we can actually look at other skills that can support or help our mining um, operations and we can kind of splice those into the different areas that we're looking at here. All right, now that we have a good baseline, we have a three to 19 day baseline for our uh, training queue. We're going to start looking at all these different skills that um, that I can be trained on this tune. And we're going to be talking a lot about some very important um, things to consider when training a mining alt. So, like I said, drones are the first line of offense. So those are very, very, very important. The next thing is the first line of defense, which is shield. Miners are for all intents and purposes shield tank so we need to be prioritizing this shield stuff as much as we can so shield management shield operations shield upgrades these are all super important but probably not as important as tactical shield manipulation now for the longest time i actually didn't train tactical shield manipulation five um but let me kind of give you an explanation of how shields work so when you reach less than 25% of your total shield, you'll start taking a considerable amount of damage. Now, what tactical shield manipulation does, it one, it allows you to use different hardeners and things like that. So you're probably, if you're running Tech 2 manip uh, multi specs, you probably already got level 4. Or if you're running Tech 1, it's like level 3, whatever. So, <coughs> excuse me. This skill reduces the chance of damage penetrating the shield when it falls below 25% by 5% per skill level and 0% at level 5. Now let me explain how important this is. At level 4, that's 20% reduction off of 100%. 
which means that at level 4 tactical shield manipulation, when you fall below 25% shield, you will take you will have an 80% chance to take damage below 25%. 80%. That's a lot. Training that 5th level means that you um, have a 0% chance to take any damage. So it allows you to uh, mitigate damage a little bit more. Um, if you're really down to the wire on that 17 days like i would say that this is like super important we're gonna put it above 19 days um because if we are in a situation where gank gankers come in especially the, the the fits that we're gonna be running i technically am moving more into a uh an overheat kind of um 95 uh 95 profile um kind of fit stuff so that's the kind of stuff we're going to be looking at doing so we want tactical shield manipulation five if we're really close to getting off grid and we drop below 25 percent shield we don't want to take a spike in damage right we want to be able to keep that tank up so we also want all these other skills too like we want shield management which increases the uh the shield capacity so we want to put that up here so we want to put that at the 13 day mark we're going to be putting these all in in descending order we want everything to fall in like minimum time to maximum time as we're adding this stuff in shield operation is a reduction in shield recharge time so that's four days we're gonna put this at the end of the um of the three dayers and then shield upgrades this is going to uh help our recharge rate so we won't put that at the eight day mark so it's gonna be like right below um the day four uh, skill the next category that I usually go over is targeting targeting is super important We're gonna go ahead and look at what skills we have so I can kind of explain you want target management It allows you to have more targets locked which allows you to queue up more rocks Signature analysis allows you to target things faster so you can target those rocks faster and also you can target rats faster especially if you start moving into like null sec or low sec where the class of ship is bigger you're gonna want a fast uh, lock time on some of that stuff Advanced target management is essentially just the the secondary uh, skill from target management. So ships that allow you to t lock 10 plus targets or more, you are going to require advanced target management. Not super important for miners, but I still like to have it. It's still a good thing. Long range targeting is super important as well. If you ever plan on actually using um, harvest set or anything like that or anything like uh, or strip miners, you're going to need long range targeting to help you know bring your target range out to match your laser um, range so there's no discrepancy there and then you have the the mag sensor compensation this is generally what mining ships use if you have any questions about like what sensor type your ship is let's go over here to the Mackinac you can go here under targeting right here and if you roll over this right here it'll tell you what sensor strength type or what sensor type your ship is so training the, the appropriate sensor skill will give you an uh, an increase on that um, ability and what that essentially does is it um, <laughs> it allows for um, it allows um, a little bit more of a resistance to counter electric uh, countermeasures and stuff so you try you I try to get this to level five as much as possible probably not a huge um, priority for if you have level four but I still try to put level five on as much as I can and then we go for engineering engineering is super important too and obviously if you don't have like um, CPU management or any of this capacitor stuff and you're looking at any of the fits that um, that I provide on this channel it's chances are that's why um, you really want to try to get all of your engineering stuff maxed out on the alt like CPU management capacitor stuff capacitor management systems operations energy grid power management all that stuff is going to allow your ship the fits that you're trying to do one, you'll be able to actually run them, and two, you'll be able to have a lot more resources in terms of um, CPU and power available if you want to do a little bit better tank or whatever the case may be. Armor, if you want hull upgrades, you want mechanics, this uh, all still needs mechanics, so that's a two-dayer. So that actually goes to the very top of the list. That's part of the Magic 14 that we want to make sure we have. Um, we're not using afterburners or uh, micro-warp drives on these ships. But you still want um, warp drive operation. That allows you to, when you're warping from point A to point B, a little bit quicker. You want navigation. That is sub-warp speed. That's when you're like moving around the belt and stuff. You want that. Um, navigation also directly affects how fast you can get off of a uh, grid. So the faster you're actually moving sub-warp and you know getting speed up to 3-4 uh, speed to go into warp, this navigation directly affects the, how fast you can actually get out of a location. So you want nav-5 
and then you want a base of maneuvering as well that is improved ship agility so that's also um, super important for you know just being a hard target so my characters usually train navigation before anything else so nav 5 invasive maneuvering are just absolutely a must have if you're running haulers miners um, pretty much anything if you want to just be able to move around a little bit more fluently navigation is your know, key you also want to check your uh your spaceship command stuff you want exhumers 5 that you know, directly affects all the roll bonuses on those ships you want more mining barge 5 in case you um you know want to jump into like a, a retriever or something but also um this is also directly affecting uh exhumers as well so if we actually go into the ship tree and we look at the bonuses for the hulk you can see that it has exhumer bonuses per skill level and then it has mining barge bonuses per skill level so you want mining barge 5 to make sure you get all of this stuff and you want exhumers 5 so you make sure you get all of this stuff right super important when it comes to like um yield and all of that stuff mining frigate probably not super important unless you are running um, prospect endurance um, uh, venture things like that um, you can do spaceship command that's also an agility skill um, I usually like having spaceship um, command 5 so actually I'm gonna put this at the bottom of the three dayers right here and then everything else in this category for our purposes right now not really super important next resource processing we want to make sure that we're able to run our crystals we're able to um, uh, the mining where we'll run our mining laser upgrades and things like that so what's important here is astrogeology 5 you should already have it if you've already kind of gotten up to the point where they can run like barges and exhumers make sure it's at five ice harvesting it is important we might do ice harvesting in the future it's 16 hours on that so we're gonna go and place it there the four day level five i'm gonna put down here at the top of the level fours I don't put it at the bottom of level fours because the, technically shield operation is more important for us right now than uh ice harvesting five and then we want to make sure we have mining five mining upgrades allows for five percent reduction for cpu penalty for mining upgrades so it's basically your mining laser upgrades so we want to get a little bit more um, cpu from our mining laser upgrade usage we can do this um, it's probably not a big priority we're probably at the very bottom we're only my fits are only using like one mining laser upgrade anyway right now because of because we're just stacking tank essentially and then reprocessing efficiency and stuff like that like we have simple ore mining our simple ore processing four right here which is fine for high sec that'll allow us to run our type 2b's our type a uh, our tech 2 crystals for uh for simple uh, or uh crystals so type 2's and stuff um if you're not going to run type 2's the on crystals and you don't need four level four um and you don't need level five unless you're going to be doing um actual reprocessing on this character but this character is not going to be in charge of doing any sort of uh, refining or reprocessing so level five on here does not matter mercoxit um, or processing not important right now if we ever do take this character into an area where merc is available then we'll queue that up um, this could also be a stretch uh, uh, skill as well but it also has prerequisites that are directly tied to things like metal allergy and stuff like that but we're not doing any research either on this character so we don't really have to do much in this category either and then biology and infomorph psychology cybernetics is super important too my characters usually get cybernetics first and then it's navigation and then evasive maneuvering and stuff like that cybernetics 5 allows us to actually run the improved uh set of training clones it also allow you to run all the imp uh, harvest sets and stuff like that so very important biology getting biology 5 is important if you want to use like um any of the accelerators that come out of like the uh the skill point packs and stuff that come off of the uh eve online store it direct it'll, it'll basically increase the duration of those so if, at biology five if you apply a cerebral accelerator that lasts four days if you have biology five it'll technically be eight days so keep that in mind we're actually going to queue this up because on any major tune that i usually use i try to get at least um i try to at least get uh, some of those uh, cerebral accelerators and also that's probably one of the one of the major if you want to like look at cheap ways to get uh skill points this is uh 18 hours so we're gonna put it below the 16 and then four days 
this is probably not as important as shield operations so it's going to go below shield operations but above ice harvesting so right now we have a good 166 days here and then we can since we're using this character every single day for mining we can kind of check in on it every single day but let's go back to like talking about um cheap ways to get sp obviously like the best way to the cheapest way to get sp is just allowing for passive train um if you take the cost of omega and how much uh, skill points they get per minute you can do the math on you know how many minutes are in the 30 days and then you know you can get basically a, a good way to like do a cost-based analysis for that the other cheaper way of getting sp is actually using the um skill point packs that are on the eve online store because they won, they come with a good amount of SP and a cerebral accelerator. I would not recommend getting those packs if you don't have Biology 5. Make sure you have Biology 5 before, and you can get the packs, get the SP, whatever, but to hold the accelerators in your like reward window because you want to make sure you get the full amount of training from those. And that's another cheap way. I usually don't recommend um, any real world or real money um, packages on the site, but those are actually pretty useful and they do refresh them. It's only one per character. They're limited for, uh, for each tier is limited you for one per character. So you can buy all of the tiers for one character and then occasionally they'll do a refresh. Um, I think my main is actually on the second refresh of that. They had like the original SP packs. He bought all those, used all the uh, serial accelerators and then wasn't able to buy any more. And then they kind of revamped the whole package tier um, and I was able to get them all again, right? And it's really important for my main because my main's like 140 million sp right so it, there is no way in, in hell that you would ever use like a large skill injector on that tune because you're going to get basically the worst um sp to isk ratio when you get that high so the most inefficient way for tunes that are really really high we're talking like any tune that's like 50 million skill points or higher the most efficient way to get sp at low cost is going to be that um omega passive train or those sp packs but biology super important and obviously drones we'll kind of go over this a little bit we kind of talked about it It was kind of our baseline here you want drones five so you can run five drones you want live drone operations five so you can run light drones and then you want drone interface and you just want all the drone things right and depending on what level or what type of drone you're using you're either going to max out like caldari for like hornet and um vespa or if you're using um amar drones and get the amar drone specialization or galante or whatever the case may be but for my purposes we're using hornets and vespas so we're uh, focusing on caldari drone spec here production we'll have industry just from actually being able to use mining ships so nothing there but that's pretty much it like a whole not a whole lot else in here um and obviously we know we're going to be doing like mining drone skills right so let's go to all skills so some of the books that we'll probably be buying and probably the only books we'll be buying is going to be uh, mining drone specialization and mining drone operations so those are books that we still need to acquire and then also we need to have to get with you into engineering we're going to have to buy thermo thermodynamics which let's look at what this character's got in terms of actually want to buy this book right now and it's uh five million i usually keep a, just a little bit into uh the corporate wallet just to like pay for offices and stuff but i'm gonna go and pull i usually pull like 10 million in but i also and whenever i buy books too i try to do like project discovery and use project discovery rewards to actually buy the books but right now for the purpose of just getting this in the queue buy and inject thermodynamics is gonna allow you to actually over um overheat your modules so we're actually running a fit on our um, hulks and stuff that benefit a lot from overheating so we actually do want like all of these levels every level of thermodynamics um, reduces the amount of damage to the module so it can basically overheat longer um, so we want that optimized we want to put this below shield management 5 because it's not as important as those shield skills and actually we're gonna put it I'm gonna put it actually down here we're gonna put it down below all the all the important drone stuff and everything I guess since we're buying skills we can go and queue this up as well that way we have everything situated so um, mining drone spec so we can buy them here um, or we can very easily buy them from the fit window so we go back into here go to the Mackinac go here and we can go buy and train we can see we need 13 
we have four so we need like nine more so that's why i love running a corporation because i can base i'm just going to give it another 10 but it allows me to have access to funds um to kind of do stuff like this during my audits so if it's like something as simple as oh just getting you know mining drone skills then you know we're done right so let's go ahead and do that we queued it up it automatically queued it up but we're going to take these out actually and i'm going to splice them into our our normal optimization here mining upgrades so we want mine drone so it's gonna be 14 minutes it's gonna be at the very top we'll have one hour on that one five hours on here so we'll put it uh, between the three hours and the other uh the nine hours and we got one day here so below the 16 hour and then seven days which will go right above shield upgrades and then we'll be able to actually put the uh, spec uh, skill down there below that so i'm probably yeah we actually just want to like you know bring it all the way up so like shield upgrade five is gonna be eight days so we're gonna basically be putting these uh mining drone specs up to the point where it makes sense so the very last one is 19 days we're not gonna put it here because that would be basically going from like 19 back to eight days but we actually want to put this down probably below drone interfacing five and we're good to go and as you can see down here this little progress bar you can see how it's like the little very tiny like little like uh, segments and then as we move on it gets bigger and bigger and bigger but it kind of changes a little bit because of these prerequisites and stuff but this would be considered a very very good optimized uh training queue and then once you have all of this you can actually just go in and just add a bunch of other stuff at the very very tail end but um chances are we're going to be moving this stuff around before we even get to that point so that is um that's how i audit and that's how i optimize the training window for my tunes this tune is uh, pretty good to go 215 days four hours to have everything that we potentially want but what's nice here is we can start mining we can technically start mining on this tune right now um without much of a without much of a delay we will probably get the mx1005 to get this character up and running but it none of this stuff in the queue is actually like keeping us from doing our our uh, intended objective uh, it's just all this stuff is gonna be nice to have and so and we can speed that stuff up like the 215 days is gonna get sped up by sp we get from logins or um if i manage to get like an, a super little accelerator and throw it on this tune that can boost it for a little bit but we want to try to get like my our biology five before i put a cerebral accelerator on here just to get the most out of it and everything but when you look at that 215 days don't look at it as like it's going to be an actual 215 days to get everything in this list done there's a lot of things like those login um, sps are going to change um and um, over the course of a month uh, you know can reduce this by a significant amount the last thing I want to cover is when I talked about um, SP per minute and how to figure it out based on um, implants and stuff like that. Um, if you actually go to any skill here or any skill category over the uh, tool table, you can see like a, a memory or you can see one of the two attributes essentially. So for drones, the primary attribute is memory and the secondary is perception. And so you're actually able to remap your attributes here so it's another thing i do in the audit sometimes as well she's got two remaps available but you can see she's primary perception and she's secondary willpower um i'm not sure what she was actually doing maybe that was uh perception yeah so she was starship command usually gt um generalized training is really nice to have like uh starship command because there's so many skills in this category and so she is um spec'd right now basically for starship command skills so if i roll over any skill that's in the queue right now you can see right here at the training rate it is 45 skill points per minute but if i go to another category you can see it's like less than that because she's not spec'd into that um, attribute category if i wanted to get 45 sp per minute in drones she would have to respect to memory perception memory being the primary perception being the secondary same for shield shield would require so right now we're getting 33 skill points per minute in shields if i want 45 per minute in shield intelligence primary memory being secondary so right now 
we have a lot of drone skills. Most, if not all of our 19 day things are drone skills. So I'm actually going to respec her. So right now you can see we're going to roll over this on the before. All of our drone skills are training at a 38 skill points per minute. So we're going to go in here. We're going to remap. Make sure we're doing this right. We got memory and perception. That's what we want. So what I normally do is I come in here. I just suck everything out. Right. We want to max out memory. That is our primary for drones. And then perception. We want to put all the remaining into perception. And then we're going to hit boom. Save changes. Cha-ching. And then um, she, I, I, basically if you only can do this like you get like basically one respec every year. Um, two are available when you start a new character or whatever and then it caps out at two. So use these uh, very sparingly. So now with now that we're spec'd here you can see we're up to 45 now per minute for these uh, drone skills. And then we're going to do... I'm going to open this back up, see if that refreshes. That took all of our 19 dayers down to 16 days. It took 215 days on the total queue down to 182 days because we identified the majority of skills in our queue being drones, and then we specced into it, specialized, and optimized the whole thing. Um, if you're not running improved clones, you're not going to see 45. You're probably going to see um, a different number uh, if you're using like standards or no implants at all. But that's why I use implants. That's why I use those improved uh, things on all of my alts because that 45 per minute is great. It'll really kind of speed things up and everything. But that's going to be it for this episode. I know we weren't doing any mining like we normally do, but I think this stuff is also very, very important because mining is very, very much adding and scaling and if you're able to scale everything efficiently and you're able to manage all of your alts efficiently, it makes your entire operation better, right? So thank you for watching. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Consider becoming a member if you want to support the solo mining series and the channel here and all that good stuff. And fly safe and get rich and keep those lasers on. Peace out.